So recruits, today I'll be showing you how to make a delicious gooey truffle, pea, and chive mac and cheese. Bum, 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 bum. Mac and cheese is one of those dishes that once you learn the base, you can then, you know, flip it with many, many, many different ingredients. Does anyone know what the base of mac and cheese is? Bechamel. Ooh, okay, great. I thought someone was gonna say cheese. Generally, you think, oh, it's cheese in there and that's what makes it thick. Cheese doesn't make it thick. Cheese makes it creamy, it's unctuous, and it's the flavor back. The base of that is this roux, which makes your Mornay sauce, AKA, or bechamel. So, first thing I need to do, is my mise en place, right? I'm gonna start with my shallot and my garlic for the base of my Mornay. One whole shallot will add a great back flavor to the chopped chive and the truffle. One clove of garlic. So garlic is a supporting cast member. So right after this, I'm going to drop our pasta. Because other than making the Mornay, the pasta is the second longest component. So we wanna cook our pasta in what? Boiling, Boiling water. water. And seasoned water. So I am using Campanile pasta. I am gonna give my pasta a stir just to make sure that nothing is sticking together. My Mornay sauce. One stick of butter. <laughs> I know, right? Everybody in the pool. My shallot in the pool. My apparatus in which I will stir my shallot and my butter. There are a couple of versions of mac and cheese. There is the no crumb top where you throw everything in the oven and it bakes and gets all nice and crusty on the top. We're not gonna bake it, but we are gonna finish it with some textural contrast. And that textural contrast we're gonna use is a little bit of a toasted breadcrumb. In this pan here, low flame, four tablespoons of olive oil, one tablespoon of butter, just so that butter starts to melt. The back, my shallot is getting translucent. I'm gonna add Captain Garlic to the party. Oh, what is that sound? That is the sound of butter. So I have my olive oil, my butter. Going back, one clove of garlic, just smashed. I'm gonna add my garlic, a half a cup of breadcrumb, a couple sprigs of thyme. The thyme is just to flavor the breadcrumb. We're gonna pull it out. To my Mornay, I'm gonna add half a cup of flour. And I'm cooking the flour out not so that you get that gummy, cloying flour feel in your mouth. Nutmeg. Whenever a fresh pod is available, use a fresh pod. And I'm gonna grate a quarter of a seed right into this flour. So just like toasting any spices, I'm toasting it right here in this butter before I add my milk. Milk, welcome to the party. I'm gonna add two cups of milk. Coming back, I'm going to pull my breadcrumb put down a paper towel so that can drain out. I'm gonna season this with a little bit of salt so that it has delicious flavor. Two more cups of milk. I do want this to come up to a simmer. I don't want this to come up to a boil. This is the base of everything. So we wanna make sure that it doesn't scorch, it scorch at the bottom, but we still need to, it still needs to keep getting thick. And the more it cooks, that flour will cook out and it'll start to tighten up. So, I'm gonna strain my pasta. You want your pasta as dry, dry as possible. I can now take a little olive oil, and all that olive oil is gonna do is just make sure that these nudes don't stick together, okay? So we see how this morning is getting thick. We're still not there yet. So we're gonna let that do its thing right now, and I'm gonna take my thyme and mince my chive. We have a Mornay working. What am I missing? Cheese. Cheese, 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 cheese. So for this ratio, four cups of cheese. This is when we build this forearm strength. So I'm using white cheddar. Do you ever catch a cramp in your forearm, Chef Cliff, and how do you adapt when that happens? Um, I hydrate well. I make sure that I have enough potassium in my system. <laughs> um, I make sure that I'm doing uh, sufficient forearm exercises so that I don't cramp up. Also, then I'll turn into a switch hitter, and then I'll just go lefty, if that's the case. Okay. So, back over here, Mornay, 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 Mornay. Just gonna add a little bit of salt. I'm gonna start working in four cups of cheese. Gently stir it in, little by little. 
So I have four cups of cheese in here, right? This is when I'm gonna tell you to not follow a recipe. Because I'm gonna take this bit of cheese here and I'm gonna put it in here. hey -o. So we have this delicious white cheddar laden Mornay sauce. We're starting to look like mac and cheese here. <laughs> Are we starting to taste like mac and cheese here? No. I didn't put peas in there yet, right? Frozen peas are held in carbonite, if you will. They're already cooked. They're done. They're set and ready to go. So I'm gonna add these right at the end just to thaw them and warm them up. So I'm gonna marry all of this together. Easiest way to do it is in a pot. Pasta, hello, right in here. One cup of peas. So I have everything in here, but it's looking a little thick, right? You're just adding splashes of milk. And I'm gonna what? Taste, Taste it. Taste it. She's good. She's good. Now I have all these things, right? So I've got this really friggin' tasty mac and cheese that's loaded with white cheddar. I'm gonna take our friendly neighborhood black truffle. Smell it from here. It's kind of friggin' delicious, right? I'm gonna take some of this beautiful textural breadcrumb that we made. And remember, you don't want the pieces of garlic, you don't want the thyme, and then chop chive. 